We're live in the group. Everybody. Welcome back to another Tuesday. Welcome forward. Or welcome forward. I do like that phrasing. I do. It welcome right. forward. Mm-hmm. Kind of hard to kind of hard to go back kinda to hard another to Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> kind of hard to go back to really anything. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's it's like it's just you can't really go back. You can have similar experiences, but it's not really back. Considering we're constantly moving, how can one in some way, shape, or form forward? How can uh, one so time yes, time welcome time forward time. here. Happy uh, Tuesday for all of you guys in the world, wherever you are. Hopefully, uh, I know the UK moved clocks, so hopefully they've managed to figure it out. Um, at least for this week, we're going. The US is switching clocks this weekend, so we should be back on uh, on normal things at that time. Um, <laughs> So as we get started here, first, if you're if you're new here, uh, just say hi. Hey, Alex. Well, two Alexes, Alexandra and Alex and Claire. Uh, welcome. And if you're also new here, just let us know that this is your first time here, so we can uh, we can give you a shout out and welcome you to this uh, amazing amazing community. And then while you're doing that, um, I'd love to get some feedback from you before we kind of start going down this rabbit hole of um, maybe what you have noticed uh, were things that kind of stopped you on your personal growth path. Um, so if you could just drop that in the comment box, like what, what had you uh, get stuck or feel stuck, right? Right. Uh, there's this notion that we're all supposed to be somewhere yesterday and we should be farther along and all that stuff. So I, I, I get that. Um, but I just have a curiosity if, if you've figured out what it is in your life that, that has you be stuck before we go down that conversation. Um, by the way, bro, maybe drop that link again for uh, those yeah. who are new. Guy's going to drop a link in here. Uh, and since we use this... Uh, platform stream we can't actually we can't actually see your names unless you click on this link and then that link basically grabs your uh, information from Facebook with the name and then that way when it shows up here we don't just see Facebook user so I'm assuming whoever said new was Stacy who's being welcomed by our uh, by our amazing team but if you want to actually have your name be known then you can just click on that link and uh, you can get in there. Uh, so Claire was the first one. She wrote, not trusting intuition. That's interesting. Um, I'm curious, Claire, did that, has that stopped your growth or is that more of like, I wish I had that to continue growth. I'm, I'm really looking for, you know, what do you guys see as the reasons maybe that you've gotten stuck on your growth path. So not trusting intuition, I can kind of see that. I'm curious if you can develop that further. Um, I, I think that because that one's a little bit, um, I mean, we can certainly discover it, but you know, there's a uh, different levels of mind, right? Like we have uh, things we can see, like objects we're interacting with, and then our mind can also create objects also. And then we have like abstract thinking, like you hear a sound outside, but you don't see it. And the mind creates an abstraction, right? So uh, intuition uh, lives more in that like abstraction. Like if we came over here, we had a hundred people and we asked you, everybody like, what's intuition mean to you? We're going to get variations in how people's minds create that abstraction, right? So uh, I think what I hear when I, people say my intuition, it's like uh, not trusting myself, right? That's like, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't trust the signals that I'm getting. So yeah. how, do I, how do I trust those signals? Yeah. Uh, Alex says my patterns, which we know all about. And she says that because she's actually in our 
uh, level three coaching program. So we, we get to interact with Alex quite a bit, which is why she was saying it that way. Uh, Alexandra writes, when I see something, I thought I had figured it out coming back triggers. Ooh. Okay. Very I'm cool. living, living that one right now. Yeah. Very, living the dream cool. with that one. Yeah. Um, okay. So as we're waiting for some others to, uh, to drop in here, let's at least start to engage in this conversation and give you guys a little glimpse into first, you know, what we've kind of noticed after coaching people for the last, I guess now like 17 years or so and doing our own personal work for nearly 20 years. And um, so we'll give you kind of like a little bit of a map, which will hopefully highlight what happens on your transformational journey and what we've noticed are kind of the biggest pit stops that uh, pitfalls, I should say that people fall into and why we feel like they get stuck. And then more importantly, uh, at the end of this, we're actually gonna share with you uh, and give you an opportunity on actually how to get unstuck in those areas. So I'm gonna just share a little bit about my journey and in my journey, you know, Guy falls into this, I know, because uh, we've kind of been on a very similar path. And then you just map out to see if this resonates for you. Like this is kind of the path that you've done. The time frame of it is irrelevant. I'm going to just share with you my time frame, but whether yours is longer or shorter than mine, you know, I, I think you'll be able to find yourself on this uh, on this map. So there was a time before you knew personal development. I know it's hard to think of that time, but there was a time before you knew about personal development and you had some sort of entrance into the path of spirituality or personal development. Now, I almost can guarantee that every single one of you knows what that first walk into this world was. For some of you, a friend gave you a book. For others, maybe you attended a seminar. Maybe someone sent you a, a certain video or a presentation or something. But there was this moment that you witnessed something, heard something that completely opened up your mind to what, like a whole new level of possibility, right? And in that moment, it was a very eye-opening experience. I call it like the, the being unplugged from the matrix for the first time where you can actually see the, the kind of false reality that we have all been living in when someone either pointed out that there's this voice in your head or you started to realize how you can look at the world through different perspectives and different lenses and reframe certain things. Like it was a very eye opening experience. And for most of us, when we had that kind of pop from, you know, whatever this reality is, it became uh, an obsession is the wrong word, but it's just what's, what's come to mind. It's like you became profoundly interested in learning more. And at that moment, what you started to do is you started to read books and watch more videos and attend other seminars and right, like you were like soaking this stuff in like a sponge with exuberance and excitement. And you would highlight certain words and books and write yourself tons of notes and journal and try all of these different things. Right. And it was incredibly exciting. And it started to impact your day-to-day -day life. Like you may have noticed that things that pissed you off before didn't quite piss you off as much. You may have noticed that uh, work, which was maybe this very like intense experience, all of a sudden became a little bit easier. Uh, family life, you know, whether it was in intimate relationships or with your kids, you now had all these amazing new tools where you're like, wow, that isn't, as difficult as it used to be. And it started to excite you to do more and more of this work. So Alex says, for me, it was in a yoga class. First time I experienced the bliss of who I truly am. Yeah. And for some of you guys, I know yoga is a big entrance into that world because it really allows you to tap into something experientially um, that's very unique and different. I actually just met someone this weekend that uh, yoga has done that for them as well. So Thank you for, for pointing that out too. Um, so you get really excited, right? And you like start to acquire more of this information. 
and some of it you put into practice and otherwise other things you wish you put into practice more often, but you kind of don't, and then you forget. Then this other book reminds you, and you're like, oh, that thing, oh, that was so great. Let me do that again. And you know, and, and we keep bouncing back and forth like that. And that goes on for quite some time. And then you get to this place on this journey. I call it phase two of our journey. And phase two of our journey is you begin to read, I mean, you continue to read more books, you continue to watch more videos, you continue to have more of these, you know, so-called uh, life altering experiences. But after a while, you get into this place of like, I already know this stuff. Like, oh yeah, that, that was like that other guy that was saying that other thing, or that woman said that other thing. And like, the book starts sounding all the same. The video starts sounding all the same. And at this point, what tends to happen is there's certain things that have evolved in your life for sure. And then there's others that you might be a year, two, three, five, ten 10 down the road. And you're like, mm, I'm still dealing with that shit. I still have uncontrollable panic attacks or anxiety when I'm doing X, Y, Z. My bank account still looks exactly the same. My relationship with so-and-so hasn't really improved. It's had moments, but it hasn't really improved. And, and you keep waiting for and seeking this new information that's somehow gonna come and save you. And because you've done so much work, you start to realize that everything does sound the same. Because at the end of the day, here's the truth, it all comes from the same place. Everyone's <laughs> just giving you their different painted version of the same exact thing. And that becomes kind of like a, a pivotal moment in your personal development journey. And maybe it hit you sooner than it hit us. It took Guy and I a long time, like a long, we, we were very stubborn in trying to find out these new forms of information, right? I think we were also young, so maybe it, time time was more on our side. Um, <laughs> but you really get to this place where it becomes disheartening. Or can be disheartening. Yeah, because you have done so much work. You've invested so much time, so much energy, and in some of your cases, a lot of money. And when you kind of look at your life at this point, you're like, how am I still dealing with this shit? Right? Like, what have I been doing all this time? And then it starts to spin. From there, it can spin into none of this shit works. None of this shit matters. It's all falling apart. It's all bullshit. None of it makes a difference. Right? And, and you can quickly start to like watch how this thing spirals down and down and down. And then it doesn't matter what you do from that place. It's like the next book doesn't make a difference. The next book, because you're already in this place of like, it's all nonsense. It's all bullshit. It doesn't help. Now, one of two things is going to happen. You're either going to continue spiraling and basically throw out all the stuff that you've done, which happens to a lot of people. Like they really get to this place and like, fuck all of this, right? Or... Yeah. So Libby says like, yes, like I've been meditating for 40 years and why am I still getting so triggered? Right. And like, you can notice in that, that there's a frustration, like a real life upset that Libby has, like she's dedicated 40 years to meditation, right? Some people here haven't dedicated 40 days, 40 minutes, <laughs> 40 minutes. Right. And it's like, she's like, how am I still dealing with this stuff? And so one of two things is going to happen. So, so first, let me just pause here for a second. Um, and I want to have Guy, if he wants to share something, but before he does that, how many of you guys can resonate with that, you know, phase one, phase two part of the journey? And you can really start to like map onto yourself like, oh my God, this is kind of what my journey has been like. And more importantly, I'm curious how many of you guys find yourself kind of in that phase two, uh, disheartened, feeling stuck, thinking that you should be farther along, all of that. 
And bro, is there anything that you wanted to add at this moment? I, I just want to raise my hand and uh, and and say, yeah, I've been I've been going through all that as well. I don't want to go too far off tangent uh, with my own stories, but I could I could write a event that transpired uh, in my life over the last certainly few months, but even more intensely over over the last few weeks. And and here's what I noticed consistently because I'm I'm like just starting to pop my head above the clouds again. I've been kind of um, in the shit for two weeks in the muck. And I, I have had thoughts and conversations in my mind like this is all I, I'm we teach it and I'm in this really hairy place. And I'm like, this doesn't work. This is we've been misled uh, because there's a part. There's a part that you can find within yourself that believes by that by doing this work, there is like something to achieve in terms of just the way that life is supposed to go now when you do this kind of work. Right. And and I get and as much as I know that that's not the case, there's that part of the ego that gets trapped in playing that game, too. It's like, oh, things are supposed to get easier. I'm not supposed to be dealing with this kind of stuff in my life anymore. Uh, this, that and the other. And, and we really forget that the whole point of the work is, is simply awareness is like, it's really just the quality of awareness, right? And so I watched this video of this guy talking about business the other day and highly successful individual. And, and he and he said this thing and it, it just kind of hit me because I've noticed that that's kind of what I do now too. There's a little bit more pause in my system than there used to be. Because it's not like I haven't gone through times of really challenging things in my life before. It's just been like a lot of them uh, very much condensed into a single point in time right now. And he said something like, you know, when most people get knocked down, like in business, they just try to get back up again. And then they fight, 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 fight. He goes, but something I learned along the way is like, when you get knocked down, he's like, just stay down for a little while. Uh, take a breather. Yeah. He's like, take a breather. He's like, maybe a day, maybe a week, maybe a month. And he goes and like, gather yourself up again, because there's something that you learn when you're down. And if you just get back up again and get back into the fight again, he goes, then you miss that opportunity to learn that thing. And then you're going to get knocked down and you're going to have to go through that lesson again. And so I was like, okay, interesting, right? Because like so many of us, when it is going sideways, um, like it kind of has been in my life, it's like, you're just, you go into panic and the way, the way that I do it when I'm panicking is my system likes to organize. It likes to tinker. It likes to meddle. It likes to put a lot of stuff into action. And, and and initially, that's what I was doing. And the more that I did that, the more things were going sideways. So then the more action I was taking and the more action I took, the more things were going sideways. And, and I think this is really the premise of, you know, the fundamentals of what we teach here is, and again, going against my own teachings and what I believe is like what really matters is the quality of energy behind the action. And so if the quality of the energy behind my actions was very low because I was doing things out of frustration, out of upset, you know, things and survival triggers in my system, what did I get more of? More things to survive, more things to get triggered by, right? It's like we are, we are ultimately generating our reality from this uh, energy that's being exuded from our body. Now, our thoughts and our awareness, these are all different indicators that we have of what that energy is. So most people are trying to like manage their thoughts as far as I'm concerned, can't be done. Like how many of you guys, how many of you guys are trying to manage your thoughts, right? It can't be done. So, or quiet your mind or, or shut it off or all it's, that stuff. So the way I see it, there's kind of like these, these three levels of mind that we can interact with, right? There's where most people are, which is like, they are just every story. Everything that's happening in their mind is the moment by moment experience that they're having. They're literally living inside an illusion of thought. Okay. The next level allow, and that's where most of you guys probably are is at least you can observe the thoughts that are being produced you may not like them you may have a lot of opinions about them but at least you can observe those thoughts right and then so and that does give you some release from living in the illusion and then there's just just pure awareness it's the the always isness of awareness and it's like and and ultimately that is what i find even in times like this, it's like I had a struggle coming back into my awareness, like finding that layer again. I started going down the levels and getting sucked into the illusion. And it just, it took me a little time. Why? And so disappointing to some of what you guys are talking about here, these like loops that we go into, right? Like we're all going into these kind of loops. Now, I want to remind you that loops are a very natural part 
and cycles of nature. And, and we have this weird way of thinking. Even if you um, look up, I believe, human nature on Google, you'll see that it literally creates a distinction between us and nature itself. It's like we are not part of this natural order of things. And so whether or not you, it doesn't matter whether you believe that, if that's in the consciousness stream, at the subconscious level, there's some of that playing in our systems as if we're like above it or separate from it or not placating with it. It's like we're, we are, right? We, we have separated ourselves from nature in the way that we live. And so we want to understand that like when you see, for example, the solar system moving through the universe, right? It seems as if our earth is going around the sun, but at the same time, the earth is going around the sun. Our sun is also moving through the solar system at, you know, ungodly speeds. And so it's really more of this like corkscrew, like this is the sun and this is the earth kind of like moving around it. And so even though we come back to the same location around our sun once a year, we are not in the same location in space. And so the perspective and the energy in which we're experiencing that location around our sun is not the same. And so we can think of we can think of the things that we deal with in our lives as like an object, like the sun, and we're the earth that's going around this object. But as we're growing and transcending and including all the lessons that we've learned, it this object is moving and so are we, and the perspective is never the same. And so a lot of times as we're doing our work, as we've set, you know, strong foundations in our system for awareness practices, it's almost like you can almost see the intelligence of the system. It's going to bring you back or, or bring events into your life that are going to trigger some of these parts in your system that you've avoided looking at in your life, because that's the nature of the system in order to help you heal and transcend those parts. Because if you didn't go all the way through the lesson, then guess what? You need to revisit it, but from a higher state of mind and consciousness, right? In order to set an even stronger foundation this time. And then every time you do that, every time you do that, you have this ability to stay in longer periods of time of well-being without being without that part in your system getting triggered, right? But ultimately, ultimately, there is going to be some stress down the road, financial, interrelational, health right? Like all the things that really matter to people, that's going to put enough stress on the system that guess what? Boom, that part's going to get triggered again. And like, you're like, now you're at that next layer of that part. Now that to me is not an indication of the work not working. It's an indication that that specific level of stress for that part has just not been transcended yet. And so when this is happening, it's an opportunity to really create more freedom in your life. But the, the challenge always is, is when that stuff arises, like it has for me, uh, and I'm sure it has for you too, right? Like I haven't gone through experiences like I'm going through right now in about 19 years, okay? That's a pretty long cycle, right? Like 19 years. Now, if if it comes in again in 19 years, like I might get another look at it, but you can imagine 19 years from now with the work that I'll have done, I'm gonna have a really different look at it. The other thing I wanna say and just last bit and I'll pass it back to Elon is, is because I've developed more safety and more trust in my system, I can go much deeper into these experiences yeah. than I ever have before. Like you guys know, like you, after your original heartbreak, whoever little boy or little girl broke your heart the first time, and you're like, I'm never going to love that way again. Right? Like there is a, a stop gap that got developed in your system. that's like, we're not going to feel that again. However, if you create enough authentic connection with people, right? Like you start developing the safety in your system again. And now something comes along and puts you back into heartbreak there is something that you experience as a little boy or a little girl when that first happened that you haven't touched since again. You're like, I'm just, we're not going to go there. And is unresolved, is still in your system and impacting your life right now. In fact, impacting your relationship with your loved ones right now and not in ways that you like because you're like, how come I don't have this connection that I'm looking for? That's why, because that trauma was really, really tough. But if you develop enough ground and safety in your system, when that arises again, you might be able to go into the depths of that experience. And as you go through it, because the only way to get liberated and have safety and freedom from everything is to go through the experience fully, is to no longer be afraid of that, right? To no longer be afraid of that sensation, of the thoughts that arise, or the experiences that arise. You're just like, yep, here it is, I'm watching, I'm observing, this is interesting, I'm growing. And so that's the liberation, but you can't do that without ground or safety in your system. And so some of these bigger layers actually don't come off until you've done a great deal of work, which is why no one can promise you 
anything in this work is going to happen overnight. There are quick distinctions and quick wins that you can get in terms of like switching your philosophy and ideas and perspectives about things. That stuff is a very quick wins, but the deeper work, the deeper work is about daily cultivation and practice. And, and it's that daily cultivation and practice that, yeah, you might be like swimming along for a while and then you like hit this really hard point in your life again, but you've done all this work now to give yourself this new layer of awareness and you're going to start seeing in new ways. And so you'll notice that the quality of your energy is what changes in terms of what's viewing. And so for like someone like Libby, like, yeah, she might be still getting triggered, but that was a thing like, you know, Libby, whether this is, I can't imagine it's your first time hearing this, but we all need reminders. Like I needed reminders. I needed people to guide me back on my alignment path or still guiding me back to my alignment path right now on a daily basis. But if like 40 years ago or whatever it was, when she started meditating, someone told her, Hey, you know what? You meditate and you're never going to get triggered again. And she's been playing that game, which is not even the game of meditation then she's gonna continuously be met with upset in her life. Instead of just looking at the quality of her awareness, is that what's expanding and growing? Can she hold more and more? Can she see more? Can she uh, kind of remove herself from this object reality and become more of the subjective viewer and have more peace when things are not peaceful in her life, right? Because again, that's the whole point. It's really about the awareness itself and cultivating that. And, and yeah, we of course we see like if you're, if you're dealing with challenges and again, you're like the fucking wild Tasmanian devil like I am once in my life and once, once in a while in my life and I'm like creating chaos from my own energy, things just get more chaotic. But from for most of the time, most of the things that happen in our lives today, you know, like they arise and it's just like, okay, that's interesting that's here and we can just sit with it and not create more chaos. And so the experience can move through your life, like through you and through your life much, much faster. And that's really how you ultimately accelerate your growth because you stop becoming so resistant to every experience that's here and you just work with it. You see the opportunity in it, you learn from it, you grow from it, the quality of your energy comes back and you start watching that, that new flower flourish in your reality. But to think that none of us are going to be dealing with challenges anymore because we've decided to meditate or that we're in awareness practices or whatever it might be, like, it's just not a realistic thing. Yeah. So, um, I don't know who said this, but uh, the last person that commented said, often it can be just a change of phrasing or a slightly different perspective on the same thought or situation that makes all the difference in your world. It's Maggie. Maggie? Maggie. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So Maggie uh, just dropped that in. And so what's interesting is because that kind of goes to where I want to take this conversation next, which is the reason people get stuck on your transformation is because if you think about it, we call this what? Mindset work, right? Personal development is called for a lot of things. It's mindset. And so what we have done through the years is through mind collected more and more information that allows us to say things like what Maggie just did. You know, oh, if I just change my perspective slightly, you know, we call it reframing. If I just reframe this situation, what do you notice, right? You notice a little bit more like, oh, I can breathe and I can kind of continue to move forward, right? How long does that moving forward last? How long does that reframe last before you get hit with that reality again? And the point is that the reason we keep getting stuck time and time again in mindset is because we have been playing the game of mindset, which is the mind telling us, Ooh, give me more information. Cause I really want to understand how all this stuff works so I can move things around to create a different understanding that makes me feel better in the moment. But that feeling of better is so temporary. And maybe you've done enough work where the temporary is not just, a few hours, maybe can stretch to a day or a week or a few months or whatever it might be. Yeah, someone says for a few hours usually, right? Before you go to bed and that voice starts drilling in your head and going, what the fuck are you doing? You totally messed that up. You suck at this. No one's going to give you that raise and no one's going to love you and da, 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 right? And it's just, 
<laughs> yeah, mindset allows it. That's a great, <laughs> that's a great line. Mindset allows us to be stuck with better words. It truly does. And look, I'm not taking anything away from mindset. In fact, we wouldn't be able to have this conversation right now. You guys get that if you didn't do all this work. I, I just want to add. I just want to add. It's an it's a it's a crucial and important foundational piece of growth work because awareness practices without mindset uh, will lead you into different types of traps. And yeah. so what we're talking about is is two sides of the same coin here, right? But when you separate them, you get into trouble. What we want what we're really exploring here is like what are the limitations of, and then how do we placate with? Like how do we how do we get the whole picture? How do we work with the whole system? Because it's just like going to a doctor, right? You can go to a specialist and they can they look through their frame and they're going to give you how to solve that problem, but only through their point of view. And if they're not looking at the entire system, the entire holistic system, then they may cause, they may cure that thing, but create other side effects that are unwanted. And so we want to we wanna get a holistic picture of how to do developmental and healing work within ourselves and with others so that we can uh, not get stuck in these traps that a specialization creates. So here's where the issue comes up, and I'm going to name two of them. I'm going to just start with one right now, is when we do only mindset work, we are literally living in a world of managing and surviving, right? Like the, the tools that we receive help us to whoever said that, you know, uh, allows us to be stuck with better words. Like it allows us to move past momentary lapses of discomfort to keep moving forward. The guy said it right before the momentary times of discomfort were never meant to be bypassed and fixed or managed or overcome. They were meant to be witnessed because it is in the witnessing of the discomfort in the allowing for the discomfort to be there, that actual healing takes place. See, when you manage something and you overcome that feeling inside, you can only run away from it for so long. It's like, you know, for any of you guys that have kids, if your kid is really noisy at any moment, right? And you, you want to have your call or whatever, the equivalent of that is basically locking your kid up in a bathroom or a room and saying, leave me alone. I don't have time for you right now. You tell me what's mm -hmm. going to happen to that little kid while you do that. Are they like, okay, mommy or daddy, I'll just lie here in my bed quietly till you open the door back up so we can have that conversation that I really want to have. Is that how it goes? Or is there screaming and kicking and banging and clawing and crying and everything else in between till eventually you break down and go, oh my God, okay, what do you want from me? right? So that same equivalent is what we're doing to the little boy and little girl parts inside of us with the best of intentions, right? Like as a parent, no parent will, well, maybe some, but no one here willingly goes out there and is like, I'm going to make my kid cry and be miserable today, right? Like your intention is always, I want to keep him safe. I want to keep him happy. I want to keep him excited. And Best of intentions. Are they always safe, happy? No. Right? So same thing is happening inside. I want you to imagine that there's a little boy. Well, there's actually hundreds of these little boys and girls inside of you that get activated. They get uncomfortable. And you going, I don't got time for you right now. So I'm just going to reframe this and make it look this way so I can move on. Are you actually at any point of that process dealing with what is actually happening inside? And the truth is you're not. And so if we want to get unstuck from the phase two of our journey and begin to move into phase three, where in phase three, you can legitimately, continuously grow like a weed. I mean, like an unending, uh, what's the, what's the, when there's like a drug has like a reverse you know, when something like when you take most drugs, like you take it and your your uh, resistance to it uh, becomes greater and greater. So you got to take more and more and more. Mm -hmm. This is like the reverse of that, right? It's like the more you do this work, the more transformation you have. It doesn't like wane. It actually like keeps intensifying. Yeah, it grows. It grows. It's just because 
what you're doing now is you're taking that first part that you've done, all of you, I'm sure have done, like we don't attract people that have not done that work, right? You take that and you begin to marry it back with your intuition, like the intuitive part of your body. Because as much as you want your mind to go into your body and release emotional traumas and heal things that have been trapped in there, it has no ability to do that. You do though. And what it takes is a shift where you let go. There's two shifts that need to happen. First is you let go of this pervasive need for more information and understanding. Because it is that that's actually slowing down your transformation once you get into this phase two, right? Like that dip. The second thing, and this is, this is the part for some of you is a doozy. Even those that are in our level two and level three programs. We've all been living in a world of survival of the fittest. Notice how you show up out there when you have things buttoned up, when your life is working, when things are good. Hey, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to show them. Look at me. Look at me taking on the world. When you're in the shit and you're not riding high, are you still out there? Are you asking for help? Are you getting support? Or do you go full Rambo, independent, mercenary, <laughs> I will figure this shit out no matter what, like, and you bury yourself in a world of aloneness? What they're finding out, by the way, the survival of the fittest model, that thing that Darwin created, they have found more and more evidence that is complete and utter nonsense. And what they're finding through nature and through testing is that we live in a world of cooperation. The evolution and nature is based on cooperation. The, everything, like, like to, from animals to plants to what is happening, everything is in a constant state of cooperation. And so... When I look at that and I realize that the technology that people have been trained in with mindset and personal development basically kind of got created in like that late 60s, early 70s window, right? Like that's when all this stuff, that tech, as amazing as it is, is 50 years old. It came from a different world. We don't live in that world anymore. Mm -hmm. That was survival of the fittest. People learned that because they were like, how do I do better than that person? It was through competition. And if we're now shifting into this world of cooperation, what we're starting to realize that there is medicine and there is healing when we are together. And you don't have to be some uber genius guru that sat on a mountain for 20 years to be able to provide the person next to you the medicine that they need to have the healing that they need. It is really as simple of as an intention and a desire and then some learning of new skills. Because my guess is you have been trying to figure this shit out on your own for a long, long time. And when it works, you feel like a king. And when it doesn't, you feel like the world's biggest piece of you know what. And my invitation is that you do not need to do this work on your own anymore. In fact, what if I told you that you have come as far as you can take it on your own? And the parts of you that are like, no, 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 because if I ask for help, that means I, I didn't do enough or I'm weak or I don't understand. That's what holds you back. So if you want to be unstuck and you want to start moving into this phase three where you can grow like a weed, first, it's going to take you giving up that you need more information and more understanding. Because the truth is, you know that game. You've done that game. You know where it's going to lead. 
let's be honest, nothing's going to shift. If you've been doing that for five years or 10 years or 20 years, this next year, you know, 2022, oh my God, this amazing blissful year. Like, why is that going to be any different? So that's step one. Step two is give up that you have to do this on your own. If you do those two things, you can shift drastically your level of growth in the next year, five, 10, 50 to unimaginable places. And you don't need to take my word for it. There are plenty of people here right now in this group who will vouch for that. And I'm not saying that that transition is easy, but I'm gonna share with you right now how we can make it easier. Okay. So every couple of months we run a two day live event. Okay. It is not about concepts. It is not about acquiring more information as much as your mind would want it to. It is not about that. It's about simply coming and saying yes to sitting in an energetic field inside of a community and watch how this intuitive part of you begins up to create healing for yourself that your mind can't even perceive. Like I'm going to share with you guys after this, uh, Alexandra, who's actually on here, shared an amazing uh, testimonial from what she was able to create like a, a full body, like healing release over our last event. Not through understanding or not through like sitting and going, okay, if I intend this, if I change that, just being in the field and being in the energy. Personal development in the 20s, <laughs> in the roaring 20s, uh, gets to be a lot easier than it has been. Truly. It no longer needs to be this hard effort focused work. It can be simple. It can be easy. And it can bring you to places that you never dreamed possible. So if you're wanting to explore that, bro, what do we do? We want to give them the link. Do we want to just have them type healing and then we'll yeah, no. So so the, here's how we're doing it going forward, guys. So if you want to buy the only thing that we do without application these days, um, there's no consideration whether you can join a program or not is this two day event. That's uh, open enrollment free for anybody. So like Elon said, not this weekend, but the weekend after is the next intuitive mind live event. You can go to intuitive mind live right now to go pick up your ticket. Okay. Uh, so that's that's that. Do you want to tell them the second path? Yeah. Two? So yeah. Okay, so that's, I would listen, and I'm just going to say this right now, that's the last event that we have going on this year, okay? Uh, past Thanksgiving, we usually cool the jets, spend time with family, recharge, like we're, we're off the board basically for, uh, mm -hmm. for all that. So Thanksgiving can be either the same as it's been for years and years and years for you. Or you can approach Thanksgiving in a very, very, very different way this year. And this two-day event, all you need to do is say yes and show up and the rest will be done. Okay? So that's that's option one. Option two is if you're going to already go that route, again, in the theme of don't do this on your own, um, we have the level one program in our emotional intelligence mastery uh, ascension path. And that program comes with a six module training plus six weeks of ongoing coaching that you're going to meet in a group uh, once a week and actually start to work on this stuff, like, like defrag all of this that has actually kept you out of the healing potential that lives inside of you, right? Kind of I think Claire wouldn't mention in the beginning, like trusting that intuition. It's like, well, how do we separate from here and actually live into that. Now, all of our programs, level one, two, three, and even four, um, everything is through application only going forward. So if that's something that you want to do, I'll just going to let you know for an extra 200 bucks over the live event ticket, you get both. So imagine for an extra 200 bucks getting six weeks of additional training, six weeks of additional coaching, 
And in order to apply, guys, going to drop the uh, the link up here right now. And all you need to do is fill out an application and someone from our team will basically review that application, maybe even get on a, a quick chat with you and really figure out like, where are you right now in life? And is this like, are you a fit to be in that program? And is this the kind of information that will actually help you, that will actually help you uh, move forward in whatever it is that you're looking to do. So uh, I just want to, to just clarify because I don't think yeah. it was clear. So yeah, for so so for level one work, it's a six week curriculum program. It actually involves uh, live and both uh, at home work that you'll do. Uh, but we also throw in a free live event ticket as well as some other bonuses, which you'll you'll see on that page if you go over there. But uh, we are only doing those enrollments through an application process now. So if you want to be in level one, uh, you have to apply. It's a very short application process. And then again, our people will review it and make sure it's just a, a great fit both for you and for us. We are not interested in working with anybody who is not coachable, yeah. period. End of story. Um, this is not a come save my life program, you know, anything like that. This is, uh, we, we don't make, this program is designed specifically for quick wins and for setting a foundation that lets you go into some of the more esoteric, higher energy spaces. And what we've seen is when people don't have this foundation, they go into those spaces, it, it can get a little chaotic from them because so much starts coming up in the system. And if you get lost in, in some of those energies, then um, it can be a little chaotic for people. So um, we now have this ascension process that we've built over a two-year process, taking tons of people through it and seeing, okay, here's the, the modulations that work and don't work. So we're very vigilant now about making sure that people are going through the, the correct process. So again, the, uh, the live event, open enrollment for anybody that wants to come. If you want to do some of the higher work that we're doing here and start our level one, which also includes that ticket, you want to go and uh, put in your application right away. Yeah. And if, if what you want to do is you want to start at the live event and then maybe even have a chat with one of our team members of like, hey, tell me about this level one. What's that all about? Um, they're happy to help you with that as well. Um, I will also tell you that uh, new this week, we are going to add because the event is coming up this upcoming Thursday at noon noon Eastern Standard Time. So just make sure I know the UK switch clock. So just make sure that you guys figure out what time that is. Um, we're going to do a live Q&A. So you can come out, you, you register, uh, come out, ask us questions about the event, about our programs, uh, what you can expect, how it works, anything like that. And we're, we're happy to uh, assist you in that. I'm just going to tell you right now, like, bang for your buck, what's out there, level one, Mindset Mastery, uh, we used to offer that program. It was $4,500 for that program, okay? Um, it's pennies in comparison today. And you get the same level of training. You get a coach, the whole deal. So um, it's the best, best game in town for sure. Yeah, it's, 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 it's like the most brain dead offer that we can make to give you guys what we believe would give you the biggest and best foundation uh, to continue to do this work. So again, just to sum this up, right? See where you are on your journey, right? Phase one, that excitement, phase two, everything kind of like starts sounding the same and you really start to hit some places that you're just upset around. And then just recognize like, okay, am I really living in a world of just acquiring more information? Am I really just wanting more and I have this incessant need and I just want to offer you, it's not even you, it's just a part of you that has convinced you that this is how we're going to move forward. And it does that because it knows that as long as it keeps you at bay and doing that, pay actual full attention to what's happening inside. And what's happening really inside is the work. That's, that's where the work, the healing, the everything that you want lives, understanding why and when and how all this stuff happened, it's cool and it doesn't create the healing, okay? So that's step one, giving up or at least being open to giving up that I'm not going to play this game of understanding more and more. And the other one is stop doing this work on your own. Mm. It doesn't make you weak. It doesn't like, you know, the, the one thing guy was sharing about how he was going through certain stuff, like... I've seen guy go through stuff. I've been through stuff, et cetera. 
I think over the last two years, we have just opened up our system so much to receive support and feel when support is actually given that we're able to go through things. And like, I'll tell you, like my first response right now, when I, when I don't feel well, my first, when I first started, like my first response was like, okay, uh, I'm going to, I would literally, this was my game. I would like go to this book. And I knew that if I opened to whatever page of this book, it was going to give me the answer that I needed at that time. How many of you guys have that like experience? You're like, oh, I'm going to pull a tarot card or whatever. Like you have your thing, right? That was then. Then it was like, okay, I don't feel well. Okay, I'm going to meditate. I'm going to like sit. I'm going to meditate. That kind of like became the next iteration of that thing. Now, when I don't feel well, I'm like, will someone sit with me? Literally, the first thought in my mind is like, someone sit with me. They don't need to give me information. They don't need to give me tools. They don't even need to give me reminders. I just need to connect with someone else's system that has more ground and more well-being in it. Because when your system is frazzled and your mind is all over the place, it is very difficult for your system to find its own way back home. And the experience I have when I sit with people, it's like, it's almost like I, I land back in my body and, and my experience is always like, oh, there I am. Yeah. I, I, I always feel like I'm filling up space in my belly. Like when, I, when I'm scared, when I'm worried, when I'm more in survival, it's like a, there's a pressurization in my center channel. And it's like I get pressed up and out. And so I become rather disassociated. It's, it's almost like I'm like drunk walking through reality and like I can't quite tell what's real and what's not real. And then so like trying to make decisions from there is like trying to make decisions when you're on some kind of a substance. It's like, yeah, it, it's kind of there, but like you would never think that way when you are fully landed in your system. And so I really want to hit this home because again, you know, two decades worth of work for Elon and myself and like the primary thing today we look for is connection with other people who have, who have established ground in their system in order to help us find that next layer. Guys, if we really believe that you can do all this work on your own behind a screen and computer, Elon and I would just spit out digital program after digital program, meditation after meditation, and we would just let you sit there and do it. Now, we're not saying that you can't do work on your own. We actually think, say every day, cultivate a practice so that you can get much bigger experiences than you've ever had before. However, understand this. We are part of just like everything else in nature, a part of a collective. And, and we are biologically built for connection. Think about what happens to a human being that's, that's put into isolation. They go into psychosis, schizophrenia, right? Like that's what happens to an imbalanced system. That's a system coming out of alignment. Why? Because you've cut it off from its source. Part of its, it's, we are all part of one collective consciousness. What happens when you make, just like a part, when you make a part within yourself separate from you, that part doesn't go away. That part gets really loud and then you you hook yourself into that identity and it almost like hijacks your system over and over again. The way out of that trap is to reintegrate. And so we want to take that same approach with our set with like our holistic self is like we want to reintegrate. We want to feel what it's like to receive authentic connection from another human being. We like again, we, we have this weird thought that like when we've grown up, when we become adults, that we no longer operate like children. Right. And then we tell children how to operate like in a healthy way that adults themselves don't do as if somehow the biomechanical suit, like the way that it operated when we were, when we were kids, no longer works that way when you're an adult. And that's ridiculous. Like your biology hasn't changed. Your, oh. your, spirit, your spirituality hasn't changed. What you needed as a child, that safety from the mother, that safety from the father, that connection, that love is still as imperative today, if not more so than it ever was over there. And so the way that kids learn is through mirror neurons. And now through science, we know that there are mirror neurons in the brain. We also know that you have 40,000 mirror neurons in your heart. Like literally your heart has a brain that it can connect or disconnect from your mind. That's what we call it. It's starting to become known as the heart mind because so many of us are just operating from here. So when you sit in a field of energy that's in alignment your energy field, just like a child learns from mirroring what they see and what they feel and what they perceive, your system continues to learn that way. And so when we see chaos in society, it's because everyone's mirroring the chaos, the energy of this chaos, right? That's happening in society. 
when there's a grounded energy, it's like recoding your system. It literally recodes your DNA. And you can start mirroring a new energy, a new consciousness, not because you have understanding, but true wisdom is directly experienced. Yeah. Right? People who speak, like the yogis and the great teachers, they speak not because they read it in the book and they're regenerating and regurgitating. They're speaking from directly experiencing higher states of consciousness. And so they are transmitting from those states of consciousness through words. Now, the words don't do enough, but what the words help people do is find a way into their own experiences. And so our programs are designed not just to give you an understanding, but to give you paths towards wisdom, true wisdom, which is a direct experience and recoding of, of energy, not just managing of thought. And then the thoughts change naturally because what ends up happening is when you have a new experience, you're going to have a new understanding and that's going to generate new wisdom into your system, into your body. It's also going to allow you to become a much more inf inf easily influential person in your life because people want to be around other people who are in an aligned state. There's just a natural gravitation towards these people. We don't know exactly what's going on, but we can sense that there's something happening here. And so if you notice like you're falling out of favor with people or your relationships are really difficult, and then you keep trying to get people to think and act and feel like you, and this doesn't work because it doesn't work. One of the way to get, get those relationships back into balance, back into health is by doing your, your inner work, by finding that, that health and balance within yourself. And then you'll see, you'll start transmitting that to people in your life. And de facto, without them needing to know that you're doing work or anything else, we see this time and time again, people's relationships change. People's job experience changes or they just leave because they are like, fuck, that's not really in alignment for me to do that anymore. Or their relationships get upgraded or millions of other little synchronistic things that can occur for people. But these are these are the ways that we we get to this place. And that's why we design all these programs to support um, and cultivate through these type of environments. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, truly, if I can give you a wish is that you stop doing this work on your own. Mm -hmm. like just like a child will learn more from observing the world, not being told, right? Like a child learns from observation. Our systems also learn from observation. And unless you grew up in a home that mom and dad were attuned and were able to provide you with that co-regulation and attunement for the parts that needed to be met at those times, you didn't have that. And so my guess is none of us had that, right? And because none of us had that, we're all walking around without an anchor point of what it even looks like or feels like to have well-being and safety in our system. So if you want, the only way to do that, you can't read that in the book, right? Like you, your system needs to sit with someone that can give them that experience where the system goes, oh, that's what that feels like. Yeah. And then it intuitively knows how to get back there. That's why this work is so simple. It just, again, show up, allow this to wash over you, and then your system will intuitively know what to do. You don't have to like think more about it, Yeah. right? And the more you sit in the energy and the more you sit in connection, the better you get at doing this. That's it's just as simple as that. That's why Guy and I still work with multiple coaches and still go to multiple programs is because like we just want to sit and bathe in that energy. Yeah. So that's the invitation. If it takes a, if it takes a village to raise a child, it still takes a village to transform a human life at any age. So it takes, it takes a village to transform any adult. It, it really is. Like we, we don't know any amazing teacher that we have today has a team of people around them to help them continue to hone their alignment. Because alignment is not something you find one time and it's like that, right? It's just like constant honing of getting all, all parts included back into the system, not what we've done, which has made them, you know, this thing outside of myself that I have to get rid of or cope with or manage. It's actually, that's the disorientation. It's the bringing it closer in, having this experience that the part has never gotten to have is what lets it reintegrate back into the system but it takes a degree of safety in the system in order for you to feel good about doing that and inviting that part in and going through that experience. 
And that's what these events are all, really all about is like, how do we create that ground of safety in your own being, in your own system so that you can reintegrate these parts, go through those experiences in a really beautiful way and then come out, you know, go through it and come out the other end in a state of liberation and freedom that you've just never experienced before. And again, we can talk about it till we're blue in the face, but it really can only be understood once it's experienced. So. Just, just come to the event and, and all the rest will, will make it make sense and, and, felt sense and all that other good stuff. Yeah. All right, guys, thank you so much for being here. Uh, again, if you have any questions about the event or anything like that, you can absolutely leave a comment here in the box. And one of our team is uh, constantly in here. You can ask whatever questions, you can send it to them on Messenger, you can even jump on a quick call with them. Uh, again, November 13th and 14th is the next upcoming, so it's coming quickly. So uh, make sure you register and grab your uh, seat. And uh, if you have any questions and want to come be live with us this Thursday, we'll be doing that live Q&A. And uh, yeah, until then, have an amazing day, my friends. Love y'all. Bye for Bye, now. Everybody.